My name is Phil. I look after my grandson under an SGO order. When we had our assessment, they sent um, two social workers, I suppose you call them, up from the pool uh, to come and look around the house. We're very sociable sort of people anyway, so we just opened the door and said, help yourself. Um, showed them around, said, anywhere you want to look on your own, you're welcome to go and have a look. Um, and they sat down, we offered them a bite to eat, they refused. Didn't want to take it as bribery. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we offered them a drink, they had a drink. And then the court said, you've got to have assessments for the SGO. And then they come up and they wanted to know how much we earned, what we did where we went, you know, what sort of subjects we liked, we read, all sorts of silly questions. At the end of the day, if that's what they want to know, then they're welcome to know, you know, it didn't bother us. A lot of the questions they asked was more like, how can I explain it? It was more like our temperament rather than what we did or how we did it. It was whether we enjoyed doing it. You know, they didn't really say, once you get this SGO, you're going to be left in the lurch. There was no sort of real explanation of what the thing was going to entail. It was just a case of, they spoke to our friends, our friends said we're safe, we're good, honest people. Um, and then that was it, really, that was the end of the assessment. And then they give us a glowing report, and the next thing we know, we're down in court. And they're on about SGOs. We had no idea what an SGO is, what it does, or how it's supposed to work. There was no rules, no, no explanation of it. The only thing that we knew was that if we didn't take him, then nobody would even be going off for adoption. My experience with Kafkas, I must admit, we did like them. Um, they did try to make it as understandable as possible. And they did do a lot of things in order to felicitate what needed to be done for our grandson. In particular, the Guardian. Um, he made it so much easier because obviously he was there for the grandson to make the grandson's transition to us easier. But sometimes they forget you don't know what questions to ask. So without knowing what to ask, you don't know what you don't know which is a really, a really funny situation to be in because it's only a year down the line or maybe two years down the line that you think to yourself, oh, I wish I'd asked about that now, or I wish I'd asked about this. You just assume that as they are the professionals, they are going to do everything that's the best for the child. If I'd had a solicitor, we might have understood what was going on. With hindsight, we would have thought to ask what exactly was entailed in an SGO order, what we were expected to fund, what we were likely to get if we needed funding, you know, what decisions we were allowed to make and what decisions will be made for us. Because as the SGO came out, it seemed like everybody said, you're the SGO people, you make the decisions, but you must do this first, and then you must do that, and you must do this. But all the decisions are yours, apart from this one, and that one, and uh, oh, this one in, and then you've got to change that as well. So we'll tell you about this one, we'll tell you about that one, we'll tell you about that one, but everything else is down to you. And that's all we got. And it was just mind-blowing. And that, even though they try to explain as much as they can for you, they still don't say, well, after all this is over, that's when your headaches begin. Because that's when you realise you've got to put up with the people who didn't do it right in the first place, trying to tell you how to put it right, when we was already putting it right. When we first got the SGO, we were under the impression that as the parental guardian of the child, we would have the final say, and that all decisions would be made by us. That turned out not to be correct, because the court kept intervening and changing various bits. 
Um, it went from us having parental control to shared parental control. And then it was, they are the parents. So they're entitled to ask questions and ask for stuff. And then it was, we've got total control again. So it never felt like a permanent thing. On the final hearing of the fourth or fifth time we went to court, the judge came out with a 20 minute speech in which he said, the child is with us until he is 18 and beyond and we have total and ultimate control over that child above all else but we've never received it in writing we're still waiting but even now there's a niggly feeling in the back of our heads that at any minute something could change and it, it doesn't seem to matter what we do there's always that feeling that Somebody will come along and say, SGI sent the thing now, you can send it back. And that would crucify me. What I would be sending him back to would be like sending humanity back to the Stone Age.